High throughput sequencing is a very important technique nowadays. For biology in general, so whenever you are considering genomics, but also from a bioinformatical point, it is very important. And I think both of these fields have to work together in order to really gain a really new result. So we have um, the biologists being interested in what happens in our genome. So what is the genome consisting of? So I would like to know what is my genome looks like. So what sequence do I have? Okay, I do have four letters in my genome, A, C, G's and T's, okay. But what sequence do I have and how do I differ from all the other people? I would like to know that. So what we do usually is we have a probe of some of my tissue. Then um, we just extract the DNA out of that and nothing else. And then we have the DNA. Usually these are long, long parts in our genome. We fractionize it in shorter parts and these short parts can be sequenced. So in, I think, all the sequencing techniques, we use adapters. So we put something on the five prime end and the three prime end and then it can be sequenced. So the most um, famous sequencing techniques are probably the Illumina sequencing or the 454 sequencing. Um, and we can sequence at once massively fractions. And um, after sequencing these fractions, we have a bioinformatical problem. So now we have a lot of these very short fragments and we need to puzzle them together again to a very long string. How to do that? This is actually quite a challenging task. So we can do that by doing something like taking a greedy algorithm. So we maybe take a long fraction, having something like 100, 200 nucleotides. Nowadays, it's even possible to have longer ones. And then we look, aha, so how often do I have that one? How much is it covered? So if I have a high coverage, I trust it more than sequences I don't have covered that much. And then I look if I have a second sequence, maybe overlapping with that one by a, a hopefully a lot. And then by this, we can extend that and we can try to puzzle together to a long string. However, sometimes that is not possible because not all parts can be sequenced. So we have gaps in between, that is a problem. But we have also another problem. Sometimes we don't know, depending on how you sequence, um, in which orientation it is. Is it a sense orientation or the anti-sense orientation? So we don't know. And then we have other problems. So for example, our human genome consists of a lot of repeats. So some parts of our genome are repeated several times. And if we have these small fractions, and we try to puzzle them together, how can we know which part it is if they look really identical? So this is also not as easy. So it would be nice to really sequence long sequences. Um, then it is easier to puzzle these things together. So puzzling these so-called reads together um, is called assembly. So we try to assemble a genome. Doing some assembly of a genome would be much easier if we have much longer reads. And nowadays we have also new techniques where we have longer reads. So we can sequence now 10 kilobases even, which is nice, but still the problem remains of puzzling them together. This is quite a nice technique nowadays. So we have now a good estimation of how our genome looks like. And this kind of assembling in bioinformatics, we divide in two groups, a de novo assembly, which is puzzling together the reads or assembling the reads um, without knowing the reference genome. So what is our aim? And another possibility is to assemble the reads while knowing how the reference should look like about. So for example, we now have a rough idea how the human genome looks like. And if I would take your genome to sequence, it should look not too far away from that one. So we have different methods of assembling. One is a bit easier than the other one. But high throughput sequencing is also used for a completely different task. So if you want to know at a certain time point what happens in our cell, what genes are transcribed, then we can also sequence that. So after transcription, we have a set of mRNAs or non-coding RNAs or RNAs in general, which are transcribed at a certain time point. And we would like to sequence that as well. 
But this is not possible. We cannot sequence RNA so far. So we have to use something in between. So we use a method in a lab which is called reverse transcription. So we reverse transcribe the RNA into the DNA and then we can sequence the DNA again with similar methods. However, this time the problem is completely different. Because what is transcribed in our genome is not a continuous string. So we just have some parts of the genome being transcribed and it's impossible to puzzle all these fragments together to one long string. Instead we use now this information after sequencing for something completely different. We have usually already the genome being assembled, so we have a reference genome and we would like to know what part of this reference genome was transcribed. So I use the sequenced fragments and I would like to know where did they come from, from the genome. So I try to find a location in the genome where it maps to. So we try to map all the reads onto a reference genome. This math mapping, this method of mapping is not as easy to perform as we may think. It is possible to do this by normal sequence similarity. However, we have a lot of artifacts included. What are we going to do after mapping? So if we map our reads onto the genome, we know now what has been transcribed at a certain time point. And if we do that for different time points, for different environments or whatever, then we can compare our transcript homes. So for example, I'm in a relaxed situation and I'm sequencing my transcript home, I know what under normal conditions happens in my cell and what parts are transcribed. And then maybe I'm in a really stressed situation, so my body has to react on that stress in, cer in a certain way, so something else has to be transcribed, possibly. So I, again, I can take such a sample, I can sequence it, I can map it onto the genome, and now I try to find out what are the differences of these two transcriptome approaches. So for this, we usually use a method called differential um, sequencing, so we try to compare these two methods. If we compare these, that is bioinformatically not as easy as we think. So if we take just one gene, and to define even a gene is not as easy. So where does a gene really start and end? So it usually doesn't start at the start codon and stops at the stop codon. Usually it has also a 5' prime untranslated region and a 3' prime untranslated region. And also within the introns we can find a lot of transcriptions going on which may regulate the gene. So what we really find around a gene are a lot of transcripts. And we have to decide what of these transcripts do we take to compare to maybe another sample. So what we would like to have is for each gene, we would like to have a number. For example, the number of reads mapping to that gene, or the nucleotide within the gene where we have the most reads mapping to, or we may also normalize by a lot of other things. So by this question of normalization, is not as easy as we think. So a lot of things have to be considered and at the moment we just try to have a standard protocol to how to normalize um, these sequences. What we would like to have is we would like to sequence a complete genome at once. But that is not possible nowadays. Or maybe it is possible for very small genomes. So maybe it is possible for viral genomes nowadays. So a virus has a genome of a length of 30,000 at most if it's an RNA virus and DNA virus can range up to um, something like bacteria genome sizes. And with sequencing something like 10 KB at once, um, we are nowadays even able to really completely sequence a virus. And that is very interesting because we would like to understand the evolution and that is much easier to understand at small genomes or at viral genomes. And that is something we are trying to approach currently. However, again, the bioinformatical part is a bit behind and we have to develop in the future a lot of new methods to also distinguish the genomes we can sequence nowadays.